in silence. The member for Hawkesbury. Oh, thank you, Mr Acting Speaker. You know, it doesn't matter, Mr Speaker, what insults this opposition throws at me today, because can I tell you, I'm feeling very resilient because I stood in Hannah Park at North Richmond yesterday with the Prime Minister, with the Premier, with very, very important residents in the area as well, and with Minister Constance and Minister Fletcher. And guess what? We announced a $500 million project, an infrastructure project, a new bridge for Richmond and a bypass, traffic solutions, and you're not delivering one single dollar worth, $500 million for Hawkesbury, and I'm feeling invincible today, so throw it at me because you got nothing on Hawkesbury, can I just say that? Mr Speaker. Order members. Member for Hawkesbury. The 2020 uh, the 21 was a challenging time for New South Wales and for my electorate, given the bushfires, the ongoing drought, the floods and COVID-19. We got it all. Rather than just repairing our economy, we want to ensure that it's rebuilt to be even more resilient and self-sufficient in the future. The New South Wales Government is committing to a guaranteed $100 billion infrastructure pipeline over four years. You should remember these stats because you've forgotten them very quickly to drive employment growth and help create 88,000 direct jobs. This includes a $3 billion accelerator fund. New South Wales is a global leader in delivering infrastructure projects. We've proven that. And I just got, was part of that announcement yesterday. Very proud Hawkesbury girl I am. Order members. This has led to the successful construction of projects of great magnitude and importance. Let me, let me remind you, North Order. Connects, the Wynyard Place I'll upgrade. I'll start booting people out if I have to. Asset recycling has played a member role in funding some you of the biggest the projects in the state, including West Connects. Oh, remember West Connects and the Sydney Metro City and South West project. The New South Wales Government. You know, in 10 Member years with Carr, you didn't build one piece of infrastructure. Shame on you as an opposition. The New South Wales Government has also invested record amounts towards regional infrastructure. Regional infrastructure. Some of you have never gone outside of the city circle here. You should get out there now and again, including the Pacific Highway upgrades, the South Australia New South Wales interconnector, and the construction of the first new dam in New South Wales for more than 30 years. And this government's delivering on it. Overall, the New South Wales government's record infrastructure investment will bring many economic benefits, including job creation and a 0.5 percentage point per annum contribution to economic growth over the next two years. Mr Speaker, yesterday I had the pleasure, as I said, of welcoming very special guests to Hawkesbury. And it wasn't a one-off thing. This is a serious investment. It will happen. We're going to start shovels in the ground after further community consultation next year. $500 million. Thank you for letting me remind you again. $500 million investment and no tolls. Put that on the record. There you go. There you go. So you can't argue that we me either. I ask the clock to be stopped. The member for Hawkesbury will resume her seat. Order, members. The member for Hawkesbury has a minute and 36 seconds. She will, re she will be heard in silence. I ask members, particularly in the opposition, do not push your luck today. I will boot you out. Do not push your luck. The member for Hawkesbury. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Our planning system acceleration program brings forward immediate reforms to support productivity, investment and jobs during COVID-19 with a delivery unit focused on unblocking programs caught up in the system. So far, 49 projects have been approved, including the Snowy 2.0 main works, Mount Druitt CBD amendment, Sydney fish markets redevelopment and the Tweed Valley Hospital stage two. Don't shake your head, these are actually happening. Our precincts, which incorporate industries such as technology, defence, food and agribusiness, are attracting investments from businesses across the world. Sydney's Tech Central, a world-class technology and innovation precinct, will create 25,000 innovation jobs and host startups. You should listen to this more often. Scale-ups and innovation partners. Atlantean <coughs> has committed to becoming an anchor tenant, creating 4,000 local Atlassian research and product development jobs, while helping Tech Central become the biggest technology hub of its kind in Australia. 
The West in Sydney are eritropolis. Well, need I say, what government's delivering on this? This government. It will further boost New South Wales' innovative credentials, and I know the member for Mulgara is very supportive of this project. The CSIRO is planning for up to 450 of its researchers and other staff to be based in a new state-of-the-art facility at the Eritropolis. I could go on, Mr Speaker, but I'm, I'm burdened by the, the clock, and I think I've educated you enough so that you don't forget the brilliant job this government is doing for this state. Thank you, Mr Speaker.